kept Mike from getting it. Mike has not gotten sick. Okay, we need to be quiet now. Yep. Okay, bye. Bye. Happy New Year, everybody. Hey, welcome. Very, very excited to have everybody here. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. We have some guest introductions today. Um, Jennifer Howell, would you like to introduce your guest? You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Welcome, Brenda. Nice, to, nice to, that you're here today. Thank you. Um, Angel Zimmerman has a guest today. Welcome, Sue. So excited to start off again with new with new members joining. Thank you very much. Um, so you see me holding the mic. I'm going to just share a couple of things. We are continuing in our process to improve the um, experience, and so uh, we did have a board me meeting yesterday, and um, we are working on the final details of of the. Um, a way to optimize the experience. Um, so as with anything, one of the things our person told us is if you don't put, carry the mic right here, it becomes much more difficult. However, this is not really sustainable if you are also then pushing the buttons for PowerPoint. I'm not doing that, so it's fine. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll ask Ken to kind of lean a bit, sorry. Um, okay, other announcements. I wanted to welcome Andy Tompkins to our board. So please stand up, Andy, and so you can be recognized. He has joined our board and is completing completing a um, one of the terms for Carol Jordan or Colleen Jamison. Colleen Jamison. Jamison. We we did some switching around. So thank you, Andy, for agreeing. I raised a glass to him at our social event. So I'm very excited. Uh, at your table, you have the Rotary Cup, um, and so please continue to give generously. Um, and again, as you know, we're, we're filling our coffers to be able to do some more distrib distributions um, in the community for um, all of the great charity work that is happening. So um, I hopefully you all were able to um, see my e-newsletter. E um, and, and I just want to recognize um, a couple of people that um, I did recognize in at the social and also at in my newsletter, but um, Chris Meinhart and Larry Goronsky received um, uh, some special Paul Harris awards and we were so pleased to be able to do that because they have done some amazing things um, in the community and kept us going and have done some wonderful things with TPAC with Larry and Constitution Hall um, with Chris. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was there. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Um, I have um, the honor of uh, recognizing another Paul Harris um, award winner. So Todd, could you come back up to see me? So as you know, our Paul Harris um, awards are given for the, um, the dollars that are given to the Rotary um, International and Rotary Foundation. And we are doing this a little bit along the way. Um, so I actually have two for you, um, but I'm, I'm very honored to be able to give these. Hang on.
back with the microphone. So this is Paul Harris um, plus five and Paul Harris plus six. So thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'm going to turn this over to Vince to, do, to introduce our guest speaker, which I'm very excited to be able to hear more about. Oh. Thank you. Well, wow. Happy New Year. Um, I'm excited uh, for this new year for several reasons. Number one, I keep dropping my notes, which I'll improve on. But I think I have some speakers that are really going to be uh, even better than we've had uh, to date. And uh, today we have a speaker that I've known for a long time, and I know many of you have too, Ken Schmanke. And Ken uh, graduated from Washburn University, where he played football. And uh, he's been a commercial realtor, one of the leading commercial realtors in Topeka ever since he graduated uh, from college. He's been with Associated Commercial Brokers, Cohen Esri. He was a founder of KS Commercial Realtors. Uh, then he uh, worked with CBRE, and now he is the uh, managing broker and owner of K1 Realty. Um, he and his wife, Julie, have four children. And uh, he, uh, in 2020, as you probably all know, purchased uh, Townside Tower and Townside Plaza. And uh, I think that that building is probably one of the most important and iconic buildings, certainly in downtown, other than the Capitol. And uh, we've all spent a lot of time there, whether we're doing business in that building or eating at the top of the tower or whatever. And uh, it couldn't have gone to a better person to purchase uh, with the history that he has in this community and the knowledge of that building. So it's my pleasure to introduce Ken Schmanke. Ken? Appreciate that, and I appreciate the invite. As he mentioned, I know many of you in this room. I actually know some of you pretty well. My neighbor, next door neighbor, Richard's over here, and I've just known a lot of you for a long time. So I appreciate you being here. One of the things we're going to do is get this on the right page. Okay. All right, well, I think, as Vince said, I think one of the things he asked me to come speak to today is uh, what's going on with town site. Um, this, this property was formerly known as, uh, originally was the first national bank building and then two or three bank names later. And then it, it was most recently referred to as the Topeka Tower. And I thought, well, that just didn't sound quite right. And adjoining property was Townsite Plaza. So we thought, well, let's just name the entire complex Townsite. And I think that's uh, it's been well received. And I, it helps in our marketing efforts to deal with the whole property as one property. But before we go too far into where we're at today, I'd like to maybe take a, a small trip back on how we got here. And there we go. I spent, <laughs> we're gonna go back a little bit further. And I spent most of my years growing up in, uh, in the country, in Mill Creek Valley, in between Alma, Kansas and Nepal. I grew up in the, you know, my nearest neighbor was a long way away, so I had to get creative. I had to think, you know, how, how do we, my, my brothers, entertain ourselves? And, you know, we had farm animals and all, you know, I had all kinds of chores. I learned, from, I, I think that's where I learned some of my work ethic from, from early ages, you know, we just had to work. This caption is kind of funny. It says, uh, Ken Schmanke, 11, son of Mr. Mr. Kenneth Schmanke, Alma, Kansas, Read 
wearily attempts to lift the cage door display from his prize-winning chickens. But every time his fingers got close to levers, the, chicken, the chickens would peck them. The chickens were displayed at the Wabunsee County 4-H Fair, which ends today. Obviously, my friends got a good chuckle out of that. But, you know, it's, it just kind of, you know, I had a fortunate upbringing. I had some folks that, that uh, taught me some good lessons along the way. Um, I was uh, graduated with a class of 42 in my class, and seven of us visited as seniors when we played football. And I think I was kind of in the sales from early on because I was, I was a decent football player, but you know, the big schools weren't coming to Alma, Kansas. So I took my, my, my show on the road. And so I thought, well, I kind of was thinking I wanted to be an architect. So I thought, well, okay, okay, got a pretty good architect. School. So I, I packed up my bag and I had a, for some game film. And the game film, the projectors that we used and the film we used was so antiquated that none of, when I would try to send film to a university, they sent it back and said, we can't play this. So I said, well, I'm just gonna take it to them. And I went and I took it and I took the projector. Coach said, yeah, you can borrow the projector for the weekend. So I, I show up to K-State uninvited, unannounced, on a Saturday morning, I knock on the door with my projector and my films. And these guys, like, they had, I'm thinking back now, they had, like, what in the world is going on? This, this, this kid going in wanting to take our time. But they did. I found a couple coaches. They looked at my film and they said, you know, kid, you're, you're pretty good. We probably want you to walk on. Said, okay. So I thought, well, let me just go down the other way. So I went to KU. The next weekend, I did the very same thing, taking my projector in. I think they must have felt sorry for me because what, this kid's carrying a projector. And same, the same result, they said, yeah, you're pretty good, we'll, but we don't have a scholarship. And on the way home, I see this sign that says, Warspring University. Well, I'll give it a try. I've got my stuff with me. I go in there and Keith Hurtley, I don't know if you know Keith, he was there and one of the other, offensive line or defensive line coach was there they looked at it they said, kid you're pretty good we'll, we'll be in touch the next weekend i was invited to a basketball game sat down with coach tardiff and he offered me six dollars for three years guaranteed i said well i better take that and so i had a decent career at orange Kirk. this was me scoring the winning touchdown against emporia my very last game it just you couldn't have capped off a, a, a mediocre career any better. <laughs> so more important, I, I met my, my bride there, Julie. She is such a sweetheart. And I'm, I'm such a she, she, worked, she does all the fitness stuff at Brewster. Here she also did um, childbirth classes and breastfeeding classes and fitness classes at Stone Trail. So many of you may know her. The... Do we need to fix something on the PowerPoint? Oh, I'm sorry. This one? This looks right. Where we're at. Should we go back so the Zoomers can see? All right. From beginning. Come on. That won't, that won't rotate. Here we are. Okay. Here. Can they see him now? Can the Zoomers see? Can you all see now? It's just a black, uh, not black not screen. Yet. Okay. Go ahead. We'll, we'll All right. So, so we, we 
We're going to zoom through these. And here a few years ago, we, we, we kind of did a re, we redid our vows with our, our kids. So proud of our kids. They're all doing so well. We're so proud of them. Um, they're uh, mostly out of the house. So as, as Vince said, we've I've kind of had a stair step career. I started out with Bill Lewis Realtors. I don't know if any, any of you are old enough to remember Bill Lewis. You know, one of my, uh, one of my first, at Bill Lewis, I learned how to go down and get the photographs from Wolves. And it, they I had to get them in however many flyers we were gonna make. So I had to get the photographs copied. You bring the flyers back, pay, paste them on a flyer, one photo at a time. That's how we did flyers back then. We, <laughs> my other job was to take the fax that fell off of the fax machine that was all rolled up and then copy them and then distribute them. That's what I learned there. But it, and I worked at Associated Commercial Brokers, Cohen Esri, you know, as Vince said, I spent a little bit of time at a, a place called Jules Real Room and Cocktail Club, if ever you, anybody had some fun there. I did. And then um, a couple of years with CBRE, they're the world's largest commercial real estate firm. I learned a lot. And I learned that this market is simply just too small for what they had to offer. So I decided, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go on my own. And uh, for about four years, I worked by myself in, a, in my house. I was doing everything. I was doing the accounting, the marketing, everything. And there's certain advantages to that. Is there's no one else to blame. I mean, if it's going to get done, you have to do it. But it, it occurred to me right around the end of 2019 that if I'm going to, you know, I was asking myself a lot of these hard questions as, you know, what's my purpose? What am I here for? And it occurred to me that if I'm going to do more, I have to, I have to build a team. So I, I remember it like yesterday, it was, the news was all over the place. You know, COVID, everybody's got to stay home for 15 days. You know, this is two years ago now, right? And I thought, all right, I, You're doing good. I thought, what a more perfect time to build a team. So I called a gal I knew for a long time. I knew she wasn't really happy in the job she was doing. She was managing a dental office. Happened to be my wife's, one of my wife's childhood best friends. So I had a good, I knew a good, I had a good rapport. I had two, I had my daughter, my youngest daughter, who was sent home from college. They weren't going back anytime soon. And her longtime boyfriend, who just on New Year's Eve proposed to her. So I, I got the three of them together. I said, let's, let's, how, how are you guys feeling about doing commercial real estate? And we like, we don't know anything about it. All right, perfect. I don't have to retrain you. And we, we called it K-1 Boot Camp. And for the next two or three months, we, we just started from square one. Worked our way up because there was nothing else going on. We weren't dead. We weren't doing anything. We got together and we, uh, what do you call it? Quarantined together. And so we, we learned a lot and we finally got moved into a small office over at Burlingame. And about six months go by, I'm like, okay, you've taught us all this, now what? We got some ideas. It was about that time we were in the negotiations with the, the tower and we were able to get that done. So, and it, it's kind of funny how things work. And it really took me to just sit and listen to God's plan. What do you need? What do I do, what do, I do next? And sometimes you just have to have faith. Let's see. 
does not move. Not getting any movement here. Stuck. It's probably operator error. It's probably operator error. No. To resume from that or something. Starting the yeah. Start over maybe. Not communicating with that now. There's another one over here. There we go. Okay. Are you seeing it now? All right, so there's three three basic principles that we, that we talk about at K1 Realty. And one is that we, you know, we, we have to love what we do. We have to love who. And it's and love is kind of a mushy word, but it's passion. It's, it's it, you have to um, enjoy. You have to be learning all the time and, and want to learn more. And we have fun. We laugh. So we have a good time. The thing that everybody in our office is probably sick and tired of me saying is, how do we add value? How do we give more than we get? Because if you give more than you get, you're going to be invited back. You're going to be invited back to the party. You're going to be invited back to another game. So, so many times when people say, well, you know, they count wins and losses. Well, in the long run, a win is being invited back to play. If you can you can defeat your opponent and be done with the game, and what does that do? You went you won you won that game, but you, the battle is over. You're done. So it's one of the things we keep harping on is how do we make sure? And we look at we try to look at things on both sides of the table. How we want to do and um, it's a little controversial sometimes, but. You know, it's hard to it's hard to speak of God in business, but I do. So we we give glory to God. At K one, we have four basic divisions: the realty, which does with the, deals with the sales and leasing, facility does the management, the maintenance. We have five guys on our build team that are building and constructing, and we put it on um, hospitality. Would have been about a year ago. Now we started K1 Hospitality. <laughs> Actually, and, and some of you may know the cafe that was in town site really was not an amenity to the building. As a matter of fact, it was kind of a, sorry. The, I went, wrote the wrote a guy a check and says, please don't come back. And so we started uh, this K1 um, hospitality. We took over the cafe. I think it's going well. It's a menace to the building now. In addition, we started um, working on some event venues within the building. And we'll get to some of those videos here soon. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what you really came to hear about. So we're getting there. The transformation of town site has been been a, a daunting task at times, but mostly it's been a real fun event for us. We've, um, we've had the opportunity to take what I, what I knew was a good asset, but it had just not been taken care of for a while. So you can see here, the, the thing that most people see is the, as, as you drive by is the, the paint job. And people thought, why would you paint a building that is a stone building that you don't really need. To paint. Uh, my answer is because it's really ugly. We, we put window film on all the windows. You can see in that first picture, the, you could see you know, blinds and half blinds. And we put window film. Now you don't really see that. It's, and a lot of people haven't even noticed it. You know, unless you told them, yeah, it does look a lot better with 
without that. And we and we painted it. And just to give people on social media something to talk about, we we put some graffiti on the side of the building. So that's been fun. We 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 made a lot of improvements on the um, interior. Some you see and some you don't. Uh, this is our office, and if you I don't know if it this was the it was a maze of small little cubicles and just not a only place to be. So we open it up. And we think we have a modern contemporary office, and we're and we're doing that throughout the building. It's just we're we're doing a lot more demolition than construction because there's a ton of offices in that building, and that's just not quite the way the office world is more open. But we've, um, to date, we're in for about 10 million. Uh, about 3 million of that was the acquisition. Three to four of that is um, infrastructure that you can't see. A million dollars, and probably a million two in HVAC work. Uh, a million eight on elevator modernization. 250,000 to upgrade the alarm systems. It, it's just a, some big numbers, but it's a it's a 50 year old building and things just are just worn out. So we had to we had to bite that bullet. But we're making some improvements on the common areas. Um, if, sometimes it's hard for me to remember how stark some of these common areas were. It was the aggregate floors, aggregate walls. So we've come in and tried to modernize that. Simple things like you know the entries and these doors were just wore out, so we replaced the, you know, a lot of these types of things. The uh, courtyard where the between the plaza buildings was getting really tore up, so we went in and made some massive repairs and put a new seal on it, and we put some more graffiti on top of that. This is some pictures of what the cafe was before we took over and after. I think it's a much more pleasant place to spend your lunch. Um, many of you remember, I'm sure have fond memories of the, the old top of the tower. The top of the tower hadn't been so fond for a while. It was wore out, outdated, and it sat vacant for three or four years. And trying to think what do we do and that's kind of how we blended in the k1 hospitality we're in the middle of covid nobody's leasing space to gather and then, well let's let's make that investment let's get the team on board let's let's put it together and, and it really has it really has turned out good we're our bookings are just increasing every day <clears throat> so we're we're pleased with how that's going the the town site 16 we, we took out the area that was the bar we took that wall out opened it up you can see a little bit from this picture but if you go online of course, you can see lots more photos but it it's um, a pretty stunning space and with stunning views we, we've had a lot of events up there and the sun just is perfect this time of year at about 5, 530. You know, it's, it's made for some stunning um, sunsets. We've also um, taken the old bank lobby and we've converted it to an event space as well. We've had some really nice um, gatherings there. We've had, we had not a uh, Halloween party that was really kind of an epic party. It was fun. And um, we've had several weddings. Uh, the, chamber had their breakfast there and so it's been well received and uh, our staff's doing a good job with that so that's uh, pretty much I think I'm getting close to where we can probably open it up for some questions happy to answer anything more that you have about my career the building other projects we're working on and I'll open up for questions Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Well, we're um, um, as as of right now, 
where And to tell you, you know, frankly, it's it's probably not the right time to make that decision because right now we're in an environment that I don't know what the alternative is. So I'm not going to change course to, to, to pivot and move in the same And that's frankly what where we're at a lot with with business in general. A lot of the tenants on the same stage. They're not in a position right now to make a decision and to pivot whatever and to make a decision on what their office space is going to look like in the future. So I think that within the next year we'll have a lot more market feedback. Tell us to continue to go with office. But we are making some progress. We went when we bought the building, we we initially Primarily because they had already made commitments, so they were they had signed leases elsewhere. We weren't able to save those folks, so we went from we lost a couple. We were down fifty five percent overall. We've made some good progress in leasing, and today we're overall we're like 76, 77 percent off. So we we still got some work. I'm so sorry. Repeat the, the question. Oh, the, the first the first question was, what's what do we use for office? That question was, do you foresee us take turning towns like 16 into a restaurant? We are contemplating if I get the right staff in place to maybe do a Thursday night supper club. I don't think the Topeka market has. I don't think there's a market for an every every night dining experience in 11,000 square feet. Um, but we're going to look at it. I cannot confirm or deny that I bought the post office. Maybe. Um, we're working on it, but it's, it's the post office moves very slow. Okay, the graffiti. I knew I wanted to do something. That was just a canvas there. We needed something. So initially, we we. I didn't, you know, we just painted it white, just something there, and it wasn't right. So we went back and painted it black again. I said, it still needs something. I, and we had days, you know, here we are spending a lot of dollars for these guys, this equipment that's hanging off the building. I didn't have a lot of time to figure out what we're going to do. And we, we, we just played around with it for a few days, and we got some graphics software out and said, let's just, let's, let's do something that looks interesting. And that's what we came up with. The painters had a, had a blast doing it because it, essentially there's panels that are, if you look close, there's you know, areas where there's, you know, there's sections. And then we took those sections and put a grid so the painters could follow that a little closer. And they had a great time doing it. And I, I kind of like it, some people don't. But it sure got, it, it has a lot of people talking about it. A month or two, right after we did it, the social media, I think there was thousands of um, remarks and comments on this. I'm like, why is it, why is it even care? And then it just, and then someone else brought it back up just like th this morning. And my daughter who works with us, and she does our marketing design, she says, yeah, they're on you again about that, the squiggles. And I'm like, but most of them are coming to your fence. 
my good. They're talking about it. Yes, my wife and I are actually moving into, the, the, we're under construction now, we are moving into the second floor of the tower, the portion that was the former um, bank um, executive wing on the second floor. The walls are up, we're waiting on final permitting, the studs are up, we can't cover anything yet for that we get the permitting finished, but it's, it's taking shape and it's gonna be a, a, a fun project for us. I was hoping you'd just buy our house and, you know. Don't you need more space, Richard? Yes, sir. Well, I haven't followed it real close. This, the question is what, what do I, what can I, do I have anything to say about the mall sale? From what I understand, the, general, the folks that have bought the property are from New York. And looking at what they've done in the past, I would anticipate they're going to bleed it. Which they're just going to take the rents as long as they keep paying it. And I don't think they have any plans of doing it. And I think there were some local folks that were trying to make something happen that would have done something more creative. But it's it's a hard project. I just I could, we looked at it from different angles, and I just like I don't know how it works. You have to have a use, and I don't know what that was yet. There was some talk about doing some sports things, and but most sports don't aren't played around Collins. No, it's fine. Um, it, it's not even close to being feasible. You'll, you won't see a building like that built as far as I can see in the future. That building, new construction would have been 300, 400 bucks a square foot. I mean, just the type of construction that that is. And um, it's 400, get, give or take 1,000 uh, square feet. So I'm at it for 40. You know, after I bought it and improved it. So it, it's just not a fees. Two things about our market right now, and maybe this will change, but right now, we, we can't afford new construction. Market rents are, are, are here and new, constr and new construction rents to justify new construction are, are double, if not more than market rent. So the people you see building new buildings are the ones that have to have that building. Franchise restaurants, people who have more money than, than they care. And, I can name a few and it's not fair. It just doesn't make sense. So hopefully our, our market, you know, one of the things that's interesting, if you look at our residential market, that's starting to kind of, prices are going up because costs of new construction, people are starting to realize if I build a house, it's gonna cost this much, but if I can go buy this house, that's why the existing home market's pumping up. We just, we just don't have that much movement right now in commercial real estate for that bump up. Yes. What are the successes that are um, well, one of the things that I, I personally look at in, in investment, when I'm considering an investment property, 
first I have to know what I'm investing in. We, we invest in markets we know. And the, the other thing is I like, I like an opportunity to come in and improve ownership. That doesn't cost me anything. I think there's some people that may have some experience with the previous owners of the town site property. And it's just common sense. It's just treating people the way you want to be treated and responding and doing things the right way. That doesn't cost me anything. And I can make some significant improvements in the bottom line just by being a better owner. And so those are some of the opportunities I look for. And some of it's just circumstance with, you know, it doesn't make the previous owners bad people. They're just in a circumstance they couldn't deliver. And so, you know, the other part is just, I've been with all 35 going on more years of experience. For the first 30 years of my career, I didn't own any real estate. I did everything third party. I helped other people make good decisions in their real estate. And early in my career, I probably wasn't very good at that. But as I, the more you do something, the better you get, right? So it was sort of fortunate for me that I didn't make mistakes on my own dime. And I try not to make too many a day, which I make them every day. We, we try to learn from them. I don't think mistakes are anything to fear. It's an opportunity to learn, so. Yes. Yes. We have asbestos in the building. We have asbestos in many of the floors in the underlayment of what's the under deck insulation. The thing about insulin, the thing about asbestos, if you leave it alone, it's not a problem. It's when you start disturbing it. So we've, you know, we've got measures in place to make sure that those that we don't mess with that. And if we do, we get the proper people in there to make sure that it's done properly. Yes, it's um, our garage, the garage next to connected to the tower has 250 odd spaces. It's not sufficient if our building's full. Fortunately, we have the plaza garage next to us that's owned, by, owned and managed by the city. Interesting thing about the plaza is I own the ground under the plaza, the city garage. They have a permanent easement. They have a parking garage there, which is kind of nice because owning an 850 stall parking garage is not a good investment. And so we own the, the slab on top and the buildings on top. They promised me they're gonna make improvements to the city garage and we'll, we'll see. But our garage is in good shape. We're continuing to make some improvements on it. We, When I bought the building, they had a security guard. So the, build, the parking garage was essentially not making any money because they were paying for people to take your ticket. And so we, we fixed that and now we're making some money on the, on the garage. So it's in good shape. We got some work to do. I think we're out, I think we're out of time. Very much, and I think we should thank uh, Washburn Football for keeping you in town. So thank you, that's wonderful. Um, so what we normally do is our thank you is we have a book, we, we donate the book to Ross Elementary. So at the end, I'm gonna have you sign it and then that will be in the elementary school. So thank you. Um, our next meeting is January 13th and will be Matt Hall from Blue Cross Blue Shield, president from Blue Cross Blue Shield. So very excited about that. Uh, really quickly, do we have any other announcements that I have not mentioned, like Steve or Stan Steve? No Rotary Rubbish Roundup this, this month. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Nature. Anne. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you to everybody who volunteered um, for the Covered in Coats project. We will be doing the bulk of those deliveries 
um, this Friday and Cody Fredrickson has been coordinating. So if you've said that you will, you will volunteer, if you have not heard from Cody by the end of the day today, follow up with him. And then if you could CC me, so then I can follow up as well. Um, but I will be out there at 1030. I get to take the book or take the coats to uh, Loman Hill. So that was very nice of Cody to give, to give me that opportunity. But thank you. Thank you so much for, for responding so quickly. And I'm really excited. If you are one of those volunteers, we will ask you to take a picture um, because we wanna be able to build our pictures and really kind of showcase the, the club service that we're doing. So, um, oh gosh, I can't remember something like at least 400, maybe even more. There were, there was a FedEx uh, vehicle that came up to Azura and lots and lots of boxes. He did all the coordinating of sorting all of the boxes and getting it all sorted. So all you have to do is go up there at the time that um, he's negotiated with you and then take and take the um, coats and he's gonna walk you through all those little, all those details, so. Yes, yes. Uh, that's the, is that the next date? Okay, all right. We will be able to uh, actually connect with some students. Um, so again, that's, that's wonderful. COVID, you know, it's just the way it is. So, okay, um, let's all stand and do the four-way test. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be fun and kind? Thank you very much, everybody. This was wonderful. Thank you for wearing your masks.